hello there welcome back to the channel hope you're safe and well in this video we're going to be talking about marksmanship I'm going to give you some tips that uh, will help you shoot more accurately and increase your scores so let's roll the titles Okay, so we're back outside then. It's a little bit breezy today, but hopefully I've taken steps to uh, keep the wind noise off the mic so we, uh, we don't get drowned out this time. Now I think I mentioned in previous videos that uh, I'm still relatively new to this, so I'm learning, trying to soak up information as much as I can find like a sponge. And uh, I'm, I'm into books, so one of the things when I take on a new hobby, I'm always on the search for books with uh, useful information that I can learn. And um, I was looking, searching around both on YouTube and in books for something that would cover um, the, the, the principles of marksmanship that would m make more sense to me. And uh, the book, that, this particular book that I found that was the nearest to what I was searching for uh, was this book here, which is called Sight Alignment, Trigger Control and the Big Lie by Master Sergeant Jim Owens, uh, US Marine Corps, retired. This book's principally, principally about um, uh, shooting, standing and kneeling with military rifles with iron sights. Um, but in this book Jim does con condense sort of the principles of mark marksmanship and shooting better in, uh, in quite a good sort of small package and what I've done is basically I've, I've taken that uh, and I've expanded it a little and uh, added some bits and uh, taken bits away to make it more relevant to uh, today and the, and the sort of shooting that we're doing. So that's what we're going to do, we're going to go step by step through this process. Uh, it's a simple systematic process that if you follow, and, and I should say from the outset, uh, that I'm still learning this as well. I'm, a, you know, I'm, still, um, I'm still trying to get this right myself. So even though I'm telling you this stuff, uh, I'm, I haven't mastered it. I know that if I follow this, when I take a shot, there's more chance of me uh, hitting the target than if I ignore it. And usually if I've missed, other things aside, um, I have, haven't stuck to this process, maybe my breathing was out or uh, my point of aim wasn't right, that sort of thing. So we'll go for it then. So the first thing that, we, um, the first thing that we're going to cover on this system is alignment. So when I talk about alignment then, what do I mean? Well, looking at this diagram here, the dotted line is the what we would call the natural point of aim to the target and we're trying to align our rifle with that natural point of aim now the important thing to take from this is that in order to do that if we're shooting off in this position we need to if you notice here we move the body to bring the rifle in natural point of aim to the natural point of aim. We don't leave the body where it is and move the rifle. So if, if we're over this side, we would shuffle our body round in the prone position to bring the rifle to the natural point of aim. And we're, if we're off to the right, we would bring it back. Okay, and I'll go more into um, moving the body rather than moving the rifle. So that's what we're trying to achieve. The first aspect then is uh, preparation for the shot. Here we're going to take a prone shot at peg. So we, in, to aid us in finding the natural point of aim, we need to make sure that we lay our mat out correctly for how we'll be lying on the ground. We don't want to be half on the mat and half off. So if you lie straight onto the peg, then obviously you can have your mat like that. Me personally, I move off at an angle around sort of 30 to 40 degrees. So 
I'm going to prepare my mat so that um, I'm already ahead of the game when I'm trying to line up the shot. OK, we're down at the peg then. We've got our shooting mat lined up correctly to ensure that we're comfortable if we're using one. And we position the rifle so that we're pointed down range. And what we're going to want to do now is sight the rifle and see where we are as regards the point of aim. So I'm lifting the rifle up and as you can see I'm not putting any pressure on the rifle, I'm trying to relax. Which is the, the second point in the step. Relaxing, okay. One of the things with this is that um, we need to support the rifle. You need to support the rifle with your skeleton, with your bones, and not with your muscles, because you need to have your body relaxed. And if your muscles are relaxed, they won't take the weight. So it's all about skeletal support, not muscle support. Now, looking through the sight here, I can see that my uh, my crosshairs are off to the right of the target. So what I could do is I could pull the rifle round but then if I pull the rifle round and I relax my muscles it's going to go back to the right again so what I need to do is I need to sort of like do a little shimmy so I've not moved much but now my point of aim is back on the target just to the right hand side of the bullseye so I need to do another little tiny shimmy and now when I'm holding the rifle relaxed the crosshairs is in the black circle of the target. So I found my natural point of aim. I mentioned the second point is relaxation. So to ensure now that I have actually found the natural point of aim, what I'm going to do is close my eyes for a few seconds, take a couple of breaths, open my eyes and look again and if the reticle is still on the natural point of aim then we're in the correct position so not everybody shoots prone on the ground at a peg a lot of you are going to be shooting from a bench or a table so how do you sort out your natural point of aim then when you can't really move your body although you can move your seat a little bit quite simple you move your wrist so you're looking down your rifle, right in this instance my natural point of aim, I'm not holding the rifle at all, I can see through the, uh, the scope, and my natural point of aim is off to the left, so basically what I'll do is I'll move the bag supporting my rifle until we get it perfectly okay, and that's it. So. The natural point of aim is dead on with the vertical element of my reticle. Okay, so let's you do it on the table. Well, I guess I'll let the cat out of the bag with the next step. The next step is relax. So, what do I mean? Well, I've got another visual aid. I couldn't find a spring, so I've just wrapped a bit of wire around a pencil. This is the spring's natural state. Put a bit of tension on the spring, then release it, it returns back to its natural state. And that's very much the way that your muscles work as well. Your muscles are under tension and you relax, they will return back to their natural relaxed state. Another demonstration, if you clench your fist really hard, you will notice that the muscles in your forearm are really tense. And unless you concentrate, you can't keep that position. As soon as your mind wanders and you think about something else, you release the grip on your fist and these muscles relax. So that's the sort of state that you want to be in to assure that you're, uh, you're getting your uh, natural point of aim. You need to be fully relaxed uh, with no tension in your muscles so that you can maintain uh, alignment of your rifle on the target. Okay. Next then, we want to move on and we want to talk about breathing. 
Let's take a look at how we breathe then, briefly. Now, I suppose the, the, the general assumption is going to be that we breathe in, we breathe out, we breathe in, we breathe out, and in again. And we have a cycle, a regular cycle, that's even. But um, that's not actually the case. If you sit and think about your breathing and just breathe normally, you will notice something. What we actually do is we breathe in, we breathe out, then we pause slightly before breathing in again, out, pause, and then in again. So at the top of the breath, when we fully inflated our lungs, there's no pause. As soon as we've inflated our lungs, you're starting to expel the air you breathed in almost immediately. But then when we've completely expelled our lungs, before we take the next breath, there is a slight natural pause. Um, and this continues throughout our breathing. So what we can do is we can take advantage of that. So when we're shooting, we can think about our breathing. We breathe in, out, pause, breathe in, out. We're coming to take our shot, so we pause and we extend that pause before we start breathing in again and that is the period where we take our shot. Now, a normal healthy human being should be able to hold their breath in that position there where you're fully exhaled uh, at least by 20 to 30 seconds with no problem. But we're not talking about 20 to 30 seconds. We're probably nearer sort of five to 10 seconds. So that is the area where we should be looking in our breathing cycle to take our shot. Obviously that's the most stable because our chest is fully relaxed, whereas at the top of the breathing in cycle, our muscles are fully sort of clenched on that cycle and then they release to let the air out. So, that's whereabouts in the breathing cycle we should be looking to shoot. So you've seen the breathing sequence then. I think just to uh, go over the points again, we don't want to be holding our breath when we're breathing in because all of our chest muscles are in tension and as we've said before we need to try and relax the body. So much better that uh, we hold our breath briefly uh, when we've fully exhaled, so that chest muscles are all relaxed. So, just as an example of uh, the sequence then, we're down at the rifle, we're lined up, we're nicely relaxed, still got our finger off the trigger, so we don't inadvertently shoot. One thing to remember as well, if you've got a safety catch, once you're aligned out safely down the, uh, down the range, you can take off the safety catch so that the last thing you want to do is when you come to actually pull the trigger, realise your safety catch is on and then you've got to go through the whole process again. So once you've got your alignment con confirmed, your rifle's pointing in a safe direction down the range, take the safety catch off. So we're looking down the sights, we're relaxed, so fingers off the trigger still. And then what I'm going to do now is just completely ignore the target. I'm going to close my eyes, breathe in slowly, breathe out slowly. Second breath, breathe in slowly, breathe out slowly, not completely exhausting my lungs and on that out breath that's when I'm going to be opening my eyes ready to aim 
and take the shot. So that's breathing. Next in the sequence then is aim. Okay, let's look at a couple of targets. Here we've got two targets. We've got an HFT flop over target on the left and we've got a standard uh, paper target with a bullseye on the right. So I want you to look at them for a couple of seconds. So, did you see anything? The point is, they're still there. They're not moving. They're always going to be static in place, unless obviously they're affixed to something that moves. You've got a little bit of movement on the paper target with the wind, but ostensibly, they're always going to be there. So you don't need to focus on the target. It's always going to be there. When we're aiming, we need to focus on our sights. You're saying that we need to concentrate our aim on our sights. So here I have my 44 Magnum CO2 pistol. So we've got a foresight, we've got a rear sight. Now, if you've watched any pistol shooting videos online at all, you notice that you'll know that the one point that they make on those videos all the time is that when you're aiming a pistol that your focus should be on the foresight and you can see on this pistol the foresight's actually got a big red sort of blob on it so that you can focus on that and where people shoot pistols where they, they haven't got a coloured foresight a lot of them will actually mark up the foresight with white paint so that they can see that ahead of the rear sight. So they're looking through the rear sight, through that little gap in the rear sight, but they're focusing on the foresight uh, when they're taking aim. So let's have a look at uh, how that works on a rifle. Here we have a, a rifle with open sights and uh, like a lot of air rifles with open sights these days, has these fiber optic uh, sights on it. So you can see on the rear sight we've got the two green dots and in the fore sight they put the bright red dot. So to aim this rifle what you would do is lift it up so that you have the, that red dot perfectly in line with the center of the, in between the center of the two green dots like that. But you would be placing your focus on the red dot and not the green dots, okay? So you'd be concentrating on lining that red dot up when with that sight picture uh, to take the shot. Your focus of attention is always going to be on the foresight. But when I'm shooting my trusty Air Arms S400, which is fitted with a scope, I don't have a foresight or a rear sight. All we have is the reticle and if you've set the diopter at the rear of the scope correctly for your eyesight your reticle is always going to be in focus no matter what range you're shooting and that's what you need to concentrate on when you're aiming to take the shot your focus should be on the reticle and not the target you will find that if you drift away from the reticle and your, the, the, the temptation is so great to move your, your eyes focus away from the reticle onto the target. And if you do that, the chances are you won't get the outcome you desire. So you need to maintain your focus on the reticle. Now you might find when you're shooting uh, targets with a, a large black uh, circle in the centre and even the HFT targets with a large black kill. That you'll lose the reticle now and again, it will just sort of disappear into the blackness. So what I, uh, a little tip, what I find is that if you just move the rifle out into the light part of the target, the white part outside the ball or the face plate 
uh, which in most cases for me is yellow, you pick up the reticle again, get your focus back on the reticle and then move it back into the black. So that's aim then, the next part of the sequence is trigger. Let's talk about the trigger then. Now up until this part of the sequence, your finger has been nowhere near the trigger. As you see, keeping my finger outside of the trigger guard, pointing along the side of the stock, so I can't inadvertently touch the trigger and take the shot. Let's talk about hand position. See here, got standard stock. So you've got a choice here really, is you can wrap your thumb around the stock, same as you would do with a pistol grip, or the way I like to shoot is thumb up. So I can push my thumb up here underneath the bolt. Some stocks actually have a, a groove that you can fit your, your thumb in, so it's a lot more comfortable. But what you need to ensure is that you're not massive grip on this rifle. You shouldn't be feeling the grip as if like you know you're trying to squeeze the wood. It should be just a nice comfortable relaxed grip so that your your fingers are wrapped round and your thumbs wrapped round and your hand is relaxed. So we're gonna now move our finger inside the trigger guard to place on the trigger. Now what we need to be doing is we need to be ensuring that we use the right part of the finger to touch the trigger. Because it is essential that when we pull the trigger, that we're pulling the trigger directly rearwards in line with the natural point of aim. If we try and like pull the trigger to one side or the other, that's gonna to tend to try and pull the rifle away, depending on how heavy the trigger is from your natural point of aim. So if you look at your finger, on your finger now, at the top, where the fingernail goes into the top of your finger, you should find like a little white uh, part on your nail, and that's called the quick. And if you find that position and you twist your finger round, that is the part of the pad of your finger that you should be uh, putting on the trigger. So you shouldn't be using the, the tip of your finger, and you shouldn't be using the first uh, joint. It should be right in that fleshy pad part of your finger there. Okay, so <clears throat> have a feel around when you put, you know, no pressure on the trigger, but move your finger around and feel that trigger on that fleshy part. And then the first thing you can do is if you've got a first stage on your trigger, you can take up the slack till you start to feel the second stage. And what you want to do then is put a constant pressure on the trigger. We want to do this, you know, we don't want to hang about because the longer that we take, the more likely that we're going to induce some sort of movement in our aim. You know, we've got our aim centered where we want the shot to go. So we want to sort of smartly, without jerking, apply pressure on that second stage for the shot to go off. So we're at the final stage in the sequence and the last element, probably one of the most important elements in this sequence, is what, what they call follow through. What we mean by that? Well, okay, so lined up, I put my pressure on my trigger, bang, shot's gone and I'm following through, which means that I haven't immediately released the trigger and I'm still looking at the sight picture through my scope and in the case of a PCP there's a good chance that you could see the pellet in flight and where it hits the target and that's what you're looking to do, you're looking to wait until you know the pellets in flight away from your rifle out of the barrel and it's at the target before you release now you might find certainly i do that if you're shooting springers 
when I fire my Springer it makes me blink. So by the time I finish blinking, pellets already hit the target. So it's very difficult for me to see the pellet in flight. But quite often, firing this 400, I can see the pellet and see where it's hit the target. So the point then there is that the shot isn't over until the pellet is well clear from the rifle. You don't want to bang and look up, oh what's going on, bang, look up. You want bang and then release the trigger and then come away from the rifle so that you're not jerking the rifle at the last minute that's going to, you know, knock the pellet off. So that's follow through. So let's summarise what we've learnt then and go through the sequence in total. First off, align. Align the rifle to ensure that we are using our natural point of aim. Relax. We should be totally relaxed. Any support that we give the rifle should be skeletal and not muscular and our muscles need to be relaxed so that um, it's not going to have an undue effect on our um, natural point of aim. Breathe. We want to get our breathing right so that we're more relaxed to take the shot. Just before we take the shot we want to take our out breath and hold our breath slightly on the out breath and take aim. Take aim by focusing on the foresight, if you have one, but if you're using a scope, focus on the reticle and not the target. Bring our pinky trigger finger in, find the correct placement on the trigger, fleshy part of the of the trigger of the finger on the trigger blade. Uh, Grip firmly but not tightly, butt the rifle into the shoulder while still holding your breath, pull on the trigger, bang, shot's gone. Try and watch the flight of the pellet through the scope. When you've hit the target and the target's gone over, release the trigger and come away from the rifle. There we have it simple systematic process and if you follow that I'm prepared to guarantee that if you haven't been doing anything like that before and you follow that systematic process you will see your accuracy improve. So there you have it then. As I said I'm still a work in progress with this. I still make mistakes, I still miss out steps which means I miss shots but I'm trying and uh, Give it a go, see how you get on. Let me know um, uh, in the comments if you have any feedback, if you try this and you find it helps. If you've got any questions, if something I didn't explain properly, then please, you know, post a comment and I will try and answer as best I can. So if you found this um, video useful, you know the drill. Uh, like, share and subscribe so that other people can uh, uh, find it in their YouTube feed but um, next time what we're going to be talking about next time I think is we're going to be looking at shooting positions so that we're going to be looking at shooting standing and kneeling I'll see you then